I recently heard this on a Joe Rogan podcast. This no pain, no gain, this one more rep, this going to failure, this going balls to the walls mentality can be a problem. And it's maybe a problem that certain sports or certain athletes or certain philosophies and methodologies have accumulated or have uh, really contributed to. So people nowadays maybe believe because they maybe look at these workout or motivation videos where you see, for example, you take a look at what David Goggins is doing. He's so, such a crazy dude who does crazy stuff crazy stuff and then he he's trying to motivate you which i think he's doing good stuff but sometimes maybe it sounds like hey if i'm not able to do four ironmans in one day then i'm you know i'm not motivated i'm stupid or i'm not talented or i don't do enough right so this doesn't take away from the fact that some people need that kind of motivation what it maybe sometimes perpetuates is this feeling of if I don't go hard and if I don't kill myself, if I don't feel that my body is yelling at me the next day or I get rhabdo, I can't quite remember the word. There's a word for it. If you go too hard and cross, CrossFitters even pride themselves um, with, with that title that they got rhabdomyolosis, I can't, can't remember the word right now. But it's actually... A problem where I think, I'm paraphrasing, where blood leaks outside of the muscle and then this could cause toxic, it's not blood, something leaks out of the muscle and then something happens and this can cause a hell of a problem. So there's even a chance or there's even a injury not only injuring yourself in a specific movement, for example, injuring your shoulder, injuring your hip, injuring your arm or whatever. You can even injure your muscles or damage your muscles to a degree where they won't function properly. And then you will have to maybe go to the hospital or just really regenerate because you didn't give your body enough time to recuperate. And that's that thinking. And I have switched my thinking from this balls to the walls training mentality to yes, going hard, having fun and getting to know your body. And that's maybe one of the reasons why it's maybe necessary or maybe a valuable option for you to talk to a good coach who can coach you so you get to so you're able to get to know your body so you understand your body well enough where you understand okay now I maybe have to dial it down a little bit even though I feel I could do more but I'm anticipating the next workout or I'm anticipating that I've been working out for five days in a row and I'm not as young anymore or maybe I have an underlying condition where I have that I have to take care of so I have to work out more smarter so all these factors come into play and that maybe tells you okay now I have to dial it down a little bit and don't get it confused. Using the minimum effective dose doesn't mean that it won't challenge you or, the, or that it won't push you. It will push you. The kettlebell, especially kettlebell training, can be really challenging and really tough if you haven't, if it's the first time you're doing it. But don't let that confuse you. And you can always find the sweet spot. The sweet spot is you will feel if you've overdone it. And your body needs two to three to four days of rest and you feel tired and you have, you're feeling more sleepy. Your body tells you, hey, you've overdone it. But there's a sweet spot where you feel, oh, my body worked. Oh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling strong. I'm feel, I feel that my body had to do something, yet I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling invigorated. I can't wait for the next workout. My mind is still there. I'm not broken. I don't feel I'm, I'm still motivated. And even if I'm not motivated, I still that I, I, I'm able to get my habits going. So I'm Go, I'm going to do this workout and once I start working out and I'm feeling better, all that kind of stuff. So that's that sweet spot that you want to go for. And it's probably for everybody, it's, it's on a different level. 